Isha Chandra Vidya Sagar, the name which pecks each Bengali nostalgic about their childhood. It reminds us of our elementary learning of Bengali alphabets with Barna Porichai. In the life sketch of Vidya Sagar, Rabindranath Tagore wrote, He was born at a time which contained modern elements without necessarily rejecting the future. The Ganges that has died down find its currents stagnant in a fane, but the Ganges that flows drifts away from stagnancy to connect itself with the sea. This is the current of Ganges that we call modern. The life of Vidyasagar follows the current of the Ganges of all time. That is why Vidyasagar is modern. On this occasion of bicentenary of Vidyasagar's birth, Tagore's evaluation of Vidyasagar is quite pertinent to understand why reflection on this Renaissance polymath is much needed now more than ever. Ishwar Chandra was born in a Bengali Hindu Brahmin family to Thakutash Bandhupadhyay and Bhagavati Devi at Birshingho village under West Midnapur district, West Bengal on September 26, 1820. His father brought him to Kolkata at the age of six. He was educated in the Sanskrit college from 1829 to 1841. He gradually acquired excellent proficiency in all branches of Sanskrit learning. The essays and verses he wrote as a student reflected his depth of knowledge and originality of thoughts and were highly appreciated by his teachers. His reputation rose to legendary heights when he passed the law committee examination at the age of 19 in 1839. As recognition of this most brilliant scholar ever produced by the Sanskrit college, Ishwachandra was awarded the title of Vidya Sagar, which literally means Ocean of Learning, by the President and members of the Law Committee in 1839. Vidya Sagar passed final examination of Sanskrit college with high distinction in 1841 and was revered as a scholar eminent in the education and elite society of the 19th century Bengal. Even the British government officials used to call him as the Great Pandit. Vidyasagar's numerous roles as an educationist, writer, social reformer and feminist have rightly earned him the credential of being one of the early progenitors of Indian modernity. His remarkable reformism has been aptly described by historian Sharmila Bose in her profile of the scholar. She writes, He was a Bengali Brahmin Sanskrit scholar. His image is that of a quintessential Pandit traditionally dressed in dhuti chador. This was no anglicized brown sahib. Yet this Sanskrit scholar battled to end child marriage and high caste polygamy and to enable Hindu widows to remarry. Vidyasagar's reformism was shaped both by his reading and his life experiences. From his memoirs, we come to know about his deprived childhood, which has perhaps shaped the generous characteristic of Vidyasagar towards the poor, whether known or unknown. We also find a mention of a widow Raimoni in his memoirs, which indicates that Vidyasagar had very closely observed the pain of a widow in the then Bengal. Vidyasagar's reformism was backed by the predicament of women who were at the receiving end of discriminatory social practices. It also extended to the domain of education as he advocated the policy of mass education to modernize the Bengali society. He is credited with the role of thoroughly remodeling medieval scholastic system prevailing in Sanskrit college and bring about modern insight into the education system. The year 1854 is remarkable in this regard.
he wrote a memorandum to the council of education in this year arguing for the use of vernacular for teaching masses in contrast to the anglicist liberal reformers woods despatch in this year 1854 incorporated vidya sagar's agenda in its recommendation of three tier education system with primary education for the masses in vernacular medium He was an ardent advocate of women education. He rightly viewed education as the primary way of for women to achieve emancipation from all the societal oppression they had to face at that time. It is also noteworthy that Vidya Sagar was not just eager to improve literacy among women, he also wanted formal education for them. and hence was his unwavering support to john drinkwater bethune in the foundation of the hindu balika vidyalaya in 1849 as a social reformist vidyasagar used his sound scholasticism when he approached the issue of widow remarriage His advocacy for the act of widow remarriage was primarily based on extracts from the Parasara Samhita and reasoned out his arguments by publishing pamphlets in 1855. Despite serious resistance from the orthodox Bengali band led by none else than Radhakanto Deb and even after a counter petition consisting of 30000 signatories the widow remarriage act was passed successfully in 1856 he disseminated his idols through regular articles he wrote for periodicals and newspaper he was associated with the prestigious journalistic publications like tattvabodhini patrika shom prakash sarvashubhankari patrika and hindu patriot He wrote a number of books that hold primary importance in Bengali culture. His lasting legacy remains with Borno Porichai, an elementary level book for learning Bengali alphabets, where he reconstructed Bengali alphabets and reformed it into typography of 12 vowels and 40 consonants. He established the Sanskrit press with an aim to produce printed books at affordable prices so that common people could have access to them. Underlying all these credentials of Vidya Sagar, however, was his own brand of liberal humanism. Like a true humanist, Vidya Sagar equated his life with reason. In this video titled Vidya Sagar and Liberal Humanism I have tried to show that Vidya Sagar was essentially an intellectual humanist Humanism was the philosophy of the European Renaissance According to the Webster dictionary humanism is a philosophy that asserts the dignity and worth of a man and his capacity for self-realization through reasons and that often rejects supernaturalism According to Encyclopedia Britannica humanism is defined as an attitude of mind attaching prime importance to man often regarded as the central theme of renaissance civilization Renaissance humanism is traceable to the 14th century Italian humanist Petrarch whose scholarships and enthusiasm for classical Latin writings the humanities gave great impetus to the movement that eventually spread from Italy to all of western Europe it more properly embraced any attitude exalting man's relationship to god his free will and his superiority over nature Philosophically humanism meant man the measure of all things. Humanist Manifesto 1933 defines humanism as faith in the supreme value and self-perfectibility of human personality. Renaissance in European history has been described as a period of transition between the Middle Ages and the modern era. Instead of theocentric scholasticism, men of learning started pursuing studies which revealed to men the wealth of their own minds, the dignity of human thought, the value of human speculation, and the importance of human life regarded as a theory apart from religious rules and dogmas.
development of regional languages free from medieval scholasticism led to nationalistic concepts and finally came the development of science and technology and their application as demanded by the newly developed bourgeois economy comparable to the european renaissance great humanistic reforms of social and educational patterns of bengal in particular and india in general occurred during the 19th century due to the impact of british rule bourgeois economy and modern western culture this is well known as the bengal renaissance this was marked by a humanistic revival of classical influence reinterpretation of age old dogmas and in a flowering of arts and literature and by the beginning of modern scientific attitude in education and life however this has been opposed by many scholars who think that the social cultural and educational reforms of the 19th century bengal is not comparable to the european renaissance they rather preferred to call this or consider this as an awakening of the urban elites who possessed enormous wealth either as property through the permanent settlement policy of the colonial british rulers or directly acting as compradors helping the english traders as business partners they had no intention or will for economic cultural or educational emancipation of the peasantry and the common people However, we all know that there are few exceptions always, and Vidya Sagar was one of them. He stands large in the realm of Renaissance that captivated the Indian social order of the early 19th century. The Renaissance that saw its advent with the emergence of another illustrious Bengali, Raja Ram Mohan Roy, gained momentum with Vidya Sagar. He was perhaps the first social reformist who combined education with social order. He had many roles to play, educationist, author, social reformer and a crusader for women right. Along with all this, Vidya Sagar was a liberal humanist whose thoughts might have had influences of the west in an era of moral and intellectual darkness he kindled the frames of humanism that embodied the indian spirit he found his country tormented politically by the british rule which not only captured the political sovereignty of the mass but was also marching towards tearing the moral fabric of the society the problems of illiteracy superstitious beliefs and debilitating situation of the women were like bleeding ulcers in the indian society the humanist movement of 19th century as proposed by the derosians strongly opposed orientalism and strongly favored anglicism the derosians or to be more specific the young bengal were characterized as preachers of ultra radicalism or extremism in bringing social and educational changes in the country formation of the society for the acquisition of general knowledge in 1838 by the derosians should be considered as a cornerstone achievement in the history of humanist movement in india vidya sagar was a member of the society from its inception His name as Isha Chandra Banerji is found in the membership list of the society during 1838 to 1843. Most young Bengal protagonists had warmest regards and reverence for Vidya Sagar. Despite his close association with the young Bengal group, he was a practical, rational and intellectual humanist. His own peculiar individuality gave his character a new dimension. He had deep faith in the cultural heritage and tradition of the country but he welcomed wholeheartedly the western knowledge and education and attempted realistic reforms he cherished both the eastern and western culture and attempted to synthesize the ideologies of the conservatives and the radicals he was a fine blend of both the cultures and created a bridge between the two perhaps with more inclination towards the latter of all the proponents of bengal awakening vidya sagar's humanism was more akin to renaissance humanism 
renewed interest and revival of Greek and Latin classical thoughts and languages were the dominating aspect of Italian Renaissance leaders like Petrarch, Cicero, and others. Similarly, Vidyasagar ardently advocated for Sanskrit learning and actively engaged in collecting, editing, and printing Sanskrit texts and literature. His proposal for Sanskrit learning and language is another example of his attempts for revival of classical studies in this country. The proposal is perhaps one of the best exposition of developmental history and literary excellence of Sanskrit study and was written with a view to develop enthusiasm for classics. Simon designated Petrarch as the first of the humanists for his passion for collecting manuscripts and resuscitation of Greek studies. According to Binoy Ghosh, Vidyasagar was the best of the humanists of Bengal. If we follow analysis of Simon regarding the role of Petrarch in Italian humanist movement, Vidyasagar not only collected the manuscripts of rare classics, but he also suggested easy methods to study Sanskrit and effectively implement it. Compi- he also compiled Sanskrit. Uh, grammar in an easier method for this purpose and established a printing press for printing this book. Now arises a very evident question that whether Vidyasagar was aware of the humanist movement of European Renaissance or was his humanism a chance parallelism with the former. It is quite difficult to answer this question specifically. However, collection of books written by Petrarch, Voltaire, Hume, Roshu, Comte in the library of Vidyasagar suggests circumstantial evidence that he was conscious of the humanist movement of Europe, but he laid his own one in his individualistic style. Like a true humanist educator, Vidyasagar was an excellent teacher and he could generate interest and motivation in Sanskrit study among his students. He is often compared with the great humanist teacher of Venice, Vittorio de Feltre, who taught the students the classics in a charming manner, explained grammar accurately but lucidly, and instead of rote scholasticism, included arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music in the curriculum. Professor Amlesh Tripathi rightly points out, the playing down of grammar, the emphasis given to English, Bengali and Sanskrit texts and the new view of mathematics and philosophy classics underline Vidyasagar's humanist approach as a teacher. One of the essential criteria of Western European humanism was development of nationalism and national language. Vidyasagar was insightful in realizing vernacular education on an extensive scale and on an efficient footing is highly desirable for it is by this means alone that the condition of the mass of the people can be ameliorated and in his famous notes on the Sanskrit college he focused on the utmost importance on creating an enlightened Bengali literature and on the responsibility of good Sanskrit scholar in evolving an elegant, expressive and idiomatic Bengali style. The same role would remain unrealized unless the students combined their sound learning of Sanskrit with that of English language and literature and of three branches in English, namely history, mathematics and natural philosophy. European Renaissance humanism initially progressed without abrogation of religion, but theological criticism soon followed and led to the Reformation movement. Religious reforms and theocentric discourses dominated the thought and activities of the pioneers of Bengal Renaissance, including Ram Mohan and De Rosians. Vidyasagar never indulged into any religious reforms and never participated in the tumultuous conflict between the Rosians and the missionaries, Orthodox Hindus, and moderating Brahmins led by Ram Mohan regarding the supremacy of one religion or the other. Vidyasagar once commented, Knowing religion is difficult, and perhaps the knowledge of religion is not required.
Vidyasagar's rejection of religious rituals and the strong criticism of Sankha and Vedanta as false philosophies have been considered by most scholars as unfallible evidence for his atheistic attitude. Why Vidyasagar raised his strong voice of protest against these two greatly revered philosophical systems of India has not been properly analyzed. However, he himself has explained the reasons in his two famous documents, Reports on the Sanskrit College and Notes on the Sanskrit College. He has mentioned about the six prominent school of Hindu philosophy and has described each one's utility. He opined that the Hindu system of philosophy does not tally with the advanced ideas of the modern time. He suggested introduction of English course before philosophy class and recommended changes in content and textbooks for the latter in the Calcutta Sanskrit College with the hope that students would be exposed to modern and new philosophy of Western world. And as they would gain external knowledge, they would be able to better expose the erroneous aspects of the philosophical system of ancient India. Vidyasagar's philosophical persuasion was to combine ancient Indian philosophy with that of modern philosophy of rationalism of the Western world and to liberate the mass from idealism. In his own life also, Vidyasagar showed a critical appreciation of value of modern Western culture and the ancient dogma-free wisdom of the East. In outward exposition, Vidyasagar was a characteristic Bengali with his favorite native dress of dhoti, chadar and choti. But in his inward exposition, he was a materialist in the application of rationality and pragmatism in life and philosophy. This is amply exemplified in many tales. For example, the punctuality in attending office or a meeting practiced by Vidyasagar at the age of lazy Babu culture of Calcutta has become a legend. He was a man of commitment. He could even keep his word by endangering his own life and property, be it to his mother or to his friend such as Michael Modushudan Datto. Michael was absolutely right when he wrote that Vidyasagar had the genius and wisdom of an ancient age, the energy of an English man, and the heart of a Bengali mother. Another characteristic feature of Vidyasagar's humanism was his patriotism and nationalism. This can be well explained with the help of most commonly cited example of Vidyasagar's patriotism and nationalism is the episode concerned with his confrontation with Mr. Carr, the Deedin principal of Hindu College. As Assistant Secretary of the Sanskrit College, Vidyasagar had made an official visit to the principal of Hindu College. At that particular time, Mr. Carr was reclining in his easy chair with his legs upon the table. On meeting Vidyasagar, he did not even care to put down his leg from the table. Vidyasagar retaliated the insult when Kar came to meet him in the Sanskrit college by reclining in his chair and placing his legs with slippers on upon the table. Kar reported against Vidyasagar for explanation. The explanation submitted by Vidyasagar has become legendary since it shows his keen sense of self-respect, manly spirit and fearless patriotism to rise against the ruling British high officials as the situation arises. The letter in reply from Vidyasagar stated, I thought that we, that is natives, were an uncivilized race quite unacquainted with refined manners of receiving gentlemen visitor. I learned the manners of which Mr. Carr complains from the gentleman himself. A few days ago, when I had an occasion to call on him, my notion of refined manners being thus formed from the conduct of an enlightened civilized European. I behaved myself as respectfully towards him as he had himself done.
I do not think that in this matter I am to blame in the least. This explanation was surely heroic. The second example of Vidyasagar's concern with his self-dignity as a native is commonly known as the famous shoe question in Asiatic society. He once went to visit the library of the Asiatic society by invitation. But he was prevented from entering the hall with his slipper while his companions with the European shoes were permitted to enter. Officials when came to know about him they relaxed the rule for Vidyasagar but he left the place immediately and wrote a letter to Mr Blandford the secretary of the Indian Museum protesting such discrimination His proud protest was strongly supported by most of the local Indian newspapers like Hindu Patriot and Somprakash Eventually the colonial rulers patronized paper Englishman wrote we hope the council of the asiatic society and the trustees of the museum will have the good sense not to make native gentlemen feel that to enter their rooms is to quote insult vidyasagar's humanism and his reforming zeal particularly his compassion for the suffering humanity were in it All the video marriages he arranged cost him substantial amount of money and he gladly sponsored them to fulfill the most important work of his life the newly married couple in most cases were socially outcast including economic blockage and vidyasagar not only provided them his vigorous moral support but also protected them by his generous financial help The situation often led him in great debt but he never refused to help the people in trouble. He extended his kind-hearted generosity to poor people even during the time of famine or outburst of a cat epidemic. Vidyasagar's will is another monumental document depicting the generosity, charity and all-pervasive benevolent and protective attitude he bore for his relative dependents and friends his desire for financial provision to the dependents and even to their sons and daughters after their death indicate the deep rooted compassion he felt for them ramendra shunda tribedi was of the opinion that vidyasagar's love of mankind was absolutely of eastern type with a flavor of his own which cannot be judged by any standard The best assessment of this great humanist educator Vidyasagar was perhaps given by historian Ramesh Chandra Datto. He wrote on one side self interest inertia stupidity on the other against them Vidyasagar. On one side social oppression on widows heartlessness of men torpor of a society in decadence on the other against them vidyasagar on one side age old superstitions and the dead weight of evil customs on the other vidyasagar on one side lifeless static and spiritless bengali society on the other vidyasagar however it is quite impossible to summarize the personality and achievement of an individual like vidyasagar whose presence was is and will be prevalent throughout the ages thus i would like to conclude this video with a line by rabindranath tagore about vidyasagar he wrote one wonders how god in the process of producing 40 million bengalis produced a man thank you